Hello and welcome to this video tutorial for the Black Box by 1010 Music. In this video I will demonstrate the features of clip mode. Choose clip mode for WAV files when you want to use synchronized loops and quantized playback for the entire WAV file. Clip mode works well with drum loops between 1 and 8 measures long. Clip is the only pad mode that supports quantization. For more information about parameters or features not discussed in this video, please check out our other tutorial videos. You can start and stop clip pads the same as any other type of pad by touching it. However, clips rely on synchronization, so the black box's internal clock must be running. You can easily tell if the internal clock is running by looking at the play button, it will be bright green, or by looking at the bars and beats counter in the upper left corner of the touchscreen. If that counter is moving, the clock is running. When you look at that counter now, you can see it counting up, so we know that the clock is running. When a clip is cued to play, you will see a white progress bar at the bottom of the pad. This indicates that the pad will start playing soon. How soon depends on its quantization settings, and we'll look at that setting in just a moment. That white progress bar will turn blue when the pad is playing. Let's begin by selecting a pad and pressing the Info button one time. That takes us to the Waveform Overview screen. If you look at the top bar to the right of the selection grid, you can see a small waveform icon. This icon will tell you which sample mode is applied to this pad. The icon we are looking at indicates that this pad is in clip mode. If you tap that menu option, you can see the other sample modes for this pad. Press the Info button again to see the parameters for this pad. The main parameters for a clip pad are identical to that of a sample pad. However, Launch Mode has some interesting applications when playing clips. Trigger will start the synchronized clip based on the quantization setting and stop at the end of the WAV file, even when loop is enabled. This allows you to use a synchronized clip as a type of one-shot. Now let me demonstrate that. I'll press play to start the clock and tap on that upper left pad one time. Gate will play the synchronized clip from the beginning as long as your finger is touching the pad or a key is held on an external controller. Gate mode will also honor the quantization and loop settings. I'll press info twice, change the launch mode to gate, and press pads to get back out. You can see the clock is still running. Toggle will play the synchronized clip from the beginning and loop until you touch it again. Toggle will also honor the quantization settings. So I'm going to tap info twice and go back to toggle and press the pads one time. You'll see the clock is still running. I'll tap this. When it gets to the end, it will loop. As expected. The ADSR, specifically attack and release parameters, can be used to control a fade in and a fade out duration of clips. Increasing attack will apply a soft fade into the clip. Increasing release will apply a longer fade out to a clip. We'll tap info twice to get to the ADSR settings, and you'll notice that the ADSR is set to its default settings. If I tap the Audition button one time, the sample begins at its full volume right away and stops immediately. If I turn attack all the way up for effect and start this, you can hear that it fades in. I tap it again, it stops immediately. If I turn the release up, 
only even to about 60%. Now I audition this sample again. And we hear that nice long fade in because the attack. I stop it. We get a nice fade out and that comes from the release control. The miscellaneous parameters give us the important parameters for clips. First is loop mode. Loop mode controls whether the wave file plays in a loop. The whole wave file will be played in loop mode for clip pads and only forward looping is supported with clips. So your choices here are on or off. Beat count enters the number of beats in the clip file to give Blackbox more information to work with when synchronizing playback to the current BPM. If set to auto, Blackbox will attempt to detect the beat count automatically. This parameter can be auto or a number between 1 and 512. In the upper right corner, we see the quant size parameter. Use quant size to decide when the playback starts and stops. Quantization will cause playback to snap to a musical grid with intervals specified by the quant size parameter. When quantization is used, the note trigger will cause playback to start and end on the next quant size boundary. For example, if the quant size is set to one bar and you touch the pad, the playback will begin at the start of the next bar. So keep your eye on the counter in the upper left corner. I'll start this on the second beat, and it starts at the one count of the following bar. If I touch this again, it will trigger the off at the one of the next bar, but we still get that nice fade out because of the release parameter in the ADSR. In the lower right corner, you see the sync setting. Sync is only enabled when quantizing is enabled, meaning the quant size parameter is not none. It can be set to anything but none. The sync feature prevents timing drift that can occur when the length and BPM of a clip does not align exactly with the playback tempo. When sync is used, Blackbox will realign the audio to match the clock at the step size specified here. Even slight differences between wave file BPM and clock tempo can cause significant drift over time. Select a value for sync that will control the size of the musical unit to which the clip will be synchronized. Choose small settings like 16th, for instance, for rhythmic or percussion loops. Choose large settings like one bar for sustained notes or drones. Typically, you have samples that are already prepared as clips before we load them into the black box, or you're using something that came with the black box that's already prepared as a clip. I'm going to scroll down to an empty pad, tap info and load, and I'm in the last directory I was looking at, and I have this log drum sample here that I want to play. I'll tap load to bring that in, and you'll notice that it loads this sample as a sample, not a clip or a slicer, but a sample. And to turn this into a clip, I simply want to change the sample mode to clip, press info to get back to the miscellaneous settings, and I'll let the black box work its magic. I'll leave beat count to auto and sync to 1 16th and start the clock. I go into song and I slow it down a little bit, it stays synced with the clock. Here are some tips for synchronizing clips. Make sure your WAV file starts at the beginning of a measure and ends at the end of a measure. There should be no blank space at either end and it should loop cleanly at full length. You can help Blackbox determine the beat count. Blackbox will use the following methods in this order to identify the beat count. It will first look at the beat count parameter when it is not set to auto. It will then look for a valid ACID tag in the WAV file that includes the beat count to try to calculate it using the following assumptions. That the time signature is 4-4, that the beat count is a power of 2, so 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, etc. 
and the clip tempo is close to the current clock tempo. Thanks for watching. Be sure to check out our other videos at 1010 Music. Thank you.